Hey, welcome to Sustainable Stace. Today I want to lean out to those of you who are seed curious. Anybody who's curious about saving seeds and isn't quite sure where to start, it's so simple. My wife always says, you take a seed, you put it in the ground, and it grows. That's how you get your food. The problem is a lot of people are so distant from their seeds and their food they don't know how to get started. Well, let's give you some hope and some options so you get rolling. Today we just want to do a little video for you about how to save some seeds so you can get ready to plant for the coming season. And we're going to look specifically at potatoes, at garlic, at corn, and also at beets. Because beets are one of those things that you usually don't see in the seed form in your garden unless you're really patient and you wait through the rest of the year. I'm Stacy Tapes. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Hey, welcome to Sustainable Stace. Uh, it's the time of the year, winter, when we're thinking about getting ready for the next season and planting. We've just come through one of the best times of the year for getting ready to plant. In our area, we call it CD Saturday, and those of us who gather and save seeds from the garden's harvest share them at a seed exchange free of charge and that way we kind of bless each other with the best of what we got last year. So seeds that have flourished in our area and have done the best are the seeds we get and share with our neighbors and friends so that everyone can get better chances. Now these are all heritage seeds that I want to talk to you about today and anything that's a heritage seed means that when you put it in the ground it'll grow a plant true to the parent that you took the seed from. Now if you get to the point of the year where your garlic, like this garlic, is, oh, it's probably seven months since I harvested it, and we grow about a thousand head a year at our place, but most people don't eat that many, right? But I find it's one of those things people love to be able to purchase. It's an easy way to make a little bit of money on the side as well. You get to the point where it starts to grow. Look at that. So I didn't get the nutri nutrition out of that garlic. I ended up... Um, not eating all the garlic that I saved. I thought I would eat more than I did. So some of the heads are still fine to eat and they're hard. Some of them are starting to dry out and some of them are like, let me be a garlic in the garden. Well, I plant all my garlic usually in October and now it's like ending winter. We're going into March, but there's great opportunity for this garlic. And I'll show you later on in the garden how you can take every one of these little babes, put it in the garden. And usually the rule of thumb with a seed is however big the seed is, that's how much soil you put on top of it. So if you put it under that much seed, it's going to grow its own little garlic and we'll talk about that later. So that's one good way to go. Garlic you can't, you can't eat, you always have the chance to grow. Now many people obviously understand that what you eat is also the seed. So when you have a potato out of the store, it doesn't look like a very viable future plant. But the beautiful thing is a plant that's been sitting like that, a potato that's been sitting like that over the winter starts to grow out of each of its eyes a potential new potato plant. And I love the fact, this is like the coolest for kids to get growing, is that you can take one potato and it becomes 40 or 50 potatoes, a whole bucket's worth. And sometimes our kids have contests where one plants the white ones and one plants the red ones and you see who got the bigger harvest. Now this is a purple heritage potato and you can see he's like ready to roll, right? The ground's still too cold, but we can just keep him in a dark, cool place and he's just gonna chill. He's good for another easy eight, 10 weeks to sit like that when the ground starts warming up he's ready to go. But as long as you're using heritage seeds, you don't have to stick with garlic or potatoes. This is heritage corn. I just tied two stalks together and hung it up outside in a building in a shed. And there it is a year later. And you can take something as simple as a butter knife and you can pry out your seeds. And now look at that. Every one of those is going to grow a corn plant. And usually a good healthy plant will grow a couple more cobs. So that's another way that you can get growing with your own seed. Now this is something you don't see every day and it's letting something that's a root vegetable grow to seed. So it's obvious that a potato or garlic or corn, what you eat is the seed, but this is something you wouldn't normally eat, but it's the seeds of one beet. And when you have beets or carrots or onions, which you don't eat the seeds of normally, you actually have to let that root stay in the ground and what was the beet or the onion or the carrot or the parsnip, it'll start giving up its life if you don't harvest it and it'll push its energy from the bulb and it'll go up and create this massive stalk. This one's almost a meter long and this is a beet plant that went to seed but we harvested it prematurely. I'd asked one of my kids not to pick it and they didn't get the instruction. I didn't communicate that well enough so they accidentally did pick it. So I don't know if all the seeds on this plant are good to go or not. So we have to do a germination test and that's really simple. I just pull some of the seeds off and if they're viable, they will sprout and every seed that sprouts would become its own beet. So here I've just put, oh, about 10 beet seeds on a paper towel and I'm just gonna pour some water on them. So now that they're wet, they'll just totally start hydrating. It'll take a little bit of time for them and I'm just gonna keep them damp and sit them on the kitchen counter on a shelf for about a week. I've got about 10 there. 
And I'd say, I'm hopeful, at least half of those are gonna sprout. Maybe more, maybe fewer, but if at least half of them sprout, I'm gonna say that's a viable beet plant. So what I'm gonna do is wherever I want beets to grow, I'll just put two seeds in the place of where I want one beet to grow. Because you can see I've got hundreds just from one plant. And the worst thing that could happen is two would sprout in the place of one and I'd have to take a baby out and let the remainder grow bigger. And uh, putting two in the place of one just gives me a good chance that if only one sprouts, I'm still gonna have a viable beet in each location. So there we are, we've got uh, germinating test going on for the beets and we'll know in about a week with the little sprouts that start growing out of there how viable they are and that's what you get do to get going on uh, testing for your seeds guys if you like what you're hearing today about someone who's taking an approach to food that's simple that's hopeful that's helpful and healthy like what we're trying to offer you at sustainablestace.com i'd like to encourage you to just click in the bottom right and subscribe it's kind of like right down there below the potatoes go there now and subscribe okay and if you want to find out more information just go ahead and check out the website